Well, Paris really is calling the Headbangers Ball tonight. We're on location in the city of Paris to bring you this Queensryche special. And we will be meeting all band members throughout the duration of the show. And as you can see, Jeff is still with me, but we're now joined by Scott. So I'll say welcome to Scott. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Promised Land album. And in the last uh, segment, uh, we were talking about how you, you took this kind of a year or so off and rejoined the real life and so on. Um, so how did you get back into writing mode for Promised Land? What was the kind of catalyst or whatever to, to get back into that kind of mindset? Um, actually, I don't, it was just something we just kind of fell into. You know, we took the time off after the Empire tour. Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing so, we all ended up buying some of the same type of equipment. Uh, recording equipment at home so we were able to pass tapes around when the time came mm -hmm. and in the time of taking off everybody was just kind of at home working on their own ideas mm -hmm. and uh, when we decided to you know get back and um, you know pool our thoughts together and we were we were ready to get back and do another record we uh, just kind of took all the ideas everybody had and we uh, passed tapes around and did more recordings on everybody each other's tapes and added things to them and you know figured after a few months of doing that that we had uh, enough material to to do a full record and, and so we went up to a log cabin mm -hmm. about what 200 miles outside of Seattle on an island and uh, spent five months there taking all the tapes that we had and kind of just mishmashing it all together and mm -hmm. doing some more recording up there at the cabin and uh, just finishing it off basically. I want to talk about that a little bit more later on actually but um, going back you mentioned the home studio thing there when Queensryche formed I think it's over 10 years ago you actually started out in your parents basement didn't you and um, this you kind of went back to that formula of kind of working from home kind of thing as well didn't you yeah actually and it's come full circle we just changed homes <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. yeah actually we even did some stuff at my parents house still on this record so we can say that every project that that the dungeon we call it has been involved in some way now it's a now it's a beer factory for my dad downstairs he's <laughs> brewing his own home beer so oh, it sounds like the perfect <laughs> environment for making music so um did the overall um theme of the lyrics kind of ins inspire um the musical direction i mean i'm just wondering what came first did you, you i mean i think you said that you came up with riffs first or i mean was it clear from the off kind of what what kind of direction this album was going to take you were all kind of thinking the same way well i think i think we were all thinking the same way but we hadn't talked about how we were thinking yet and when we um, got back together and regrouped um, uh, we all started just sharing what we've been experiencing mm -hmm. uh, in individually and um, i sort of recognized that there was a theme there and so everyone had been sort of writing musical bits and pieces over this period of time and uh, we just started looking at, at the bits that would fit with the lyrical theme. Uh, we actually wrote a lot of material and uh, we chose the songs that appeared on the album because they all sort of fit nicely together. And uh, so we saved uh, some of the other stuff for, uh, I don't know, future, future use I suppose. But this album, we were looking for capturing a, um, an atmosphere and uh, really uh, touching upon the theme as much as possible and trying to match lyrics with uh, the music. You mentioned the, the cabin in the San Juan yeah. Islands, which is very isolated. Did that help you kind of really focus in on what you were doing? Because obviously there weren't any distractions. Yeah, actually the, we, that whole idea was kind of a, a carry forward of the idea that we started doing all these ideas at home in the first place. And we wanted to keep that relaxed, you know, no pressure type atmosphere. Um, to continue on, so we, we got the log cabin to, to definitely get away from everything and to focus very well and be relaxed, not spending a lot of money in somebody else's studio. And it really gave us the ability to not really be influenced by anything else around us. And so, you know, the record being, you know, the idea behind the record is a very personal inside type of record. And uh, it just gave us the ability to really focus on the inside because there was nothing else going on around us except for, you know, nature, you know, seals and, <laughs> and you know, whales and stuff. But it was, very, it was very calming and it was a good place to be. I think, I think another thing that was kind of interesting too was the, the fact that we had been off the road and away from each other for a long time. And by all of us uh, uh, staying in the cabin together and working on a project was uh, 
it sort of helped bring in that communal yeah, sort of uh, going right exactly and we all found ourselves focusing on the project and, and rekindling our uh, our relationships again you know with each other and uh, it was like we picked up and you know took off where we left it was, it was a good prelude to getting on the road and being yeah. in a bus forever with each other we figured out let's let's do it at home first get all the things out of the way and then we'll go out on the road good idea good idea well we've got some more music on the way for you from Queensryche and uh, we're actually going to turn the clock back to uh, very early on in the band's career and um, actually this is uh, Queensryche live in Tokyo we think from about well I think it's 1984 because we had right. just finished uh, three months of recording in London actually and uh, in the winter of 84 and then we went to Japan in August for our first tour there so this was rec filmed at that time. Good. So we're gonna have a look at that it's a classic performance and uh, you'll see that the guy's image has changed a great deal since those early days this is Queensryche live in Tokyo as we said and take hold of the flame. Headbangers Ball bringing you all the action from the Queensryche European tour. We're joining the guys in Paris to talk about the new album, Promised Land. Jeff and Scott on hand to give us the inside track on the new record. And um, if you've listened to the album, which I hope you have, you'll know that they certainly, there certainly are some heavier moments, but there's also more of a kind of um, overall acoustic feel. And uh, I'm wondering, did you kind of re redefine your idea of heaviness for this album um, it doesn't have to be about big power chords does it no it doesn't really we were, we were trying to give um, the music size and, and space and um, because uh, I suppose of the lyrical direction uh, um, making impact with dynamics mm -hmm. and uh, having some place to go you know uh, we, we all love power chords and we like uh, you know the, the big chunky guitar staccato uh, sort of approach as well but an, al an entire album like that to us at least for at this point um, seemed uh, kind of tedious mm -hmm. so we decided to uh, play with dynamics quite uh, a lot mm -hmm. and uh, give the music someplace to go yeah. you know and um, you know just looking for new ways of uh, doing things and mm -hmm. it's not to say our next album is going to be anything like this mm -hmm. but uh, this seemed right for the the time and the and the, and the subject I think the lyrics add a, 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 a new intensity as well, don't they? Well, we try. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned there that you, you kind of tried to keep things um, creatively challenging. Is that where the kind of experimentation with different instrumentation came in as well? Yeah, pretty much. We've always, you know, ever since we got together um, way back in the early 80s, was setting no limits for ourselves was kind of a goal that we always talked about, never having boundaries in what we did. and. Uh, on this record is just another extension of that and wanting to expand our musical palette mm -hmm. and horizons by not always doing the same thing with the instruments that we have, mm -hmm. trying different ways of, like you said, redefining heavy, you know, a song like Bridge, yeah. which is, you know, lyrically a heavy, a heavy idea, and, but, you know, musically it's kind of, you know, kind of goes the other way. It and it's it, a nice it kind of, um, dichotomy. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and just, you know, instrumentation on this record, we just wanted to experiment on different things. You know, we have saxophone, we have all sorts of different things that we've never done before. Which is another thing about being on the log cabin that we spoke about earlier was not spending money on a time clock in yeah. somebody else's studio. We could spend days experimenting on things that we, you know, we'd turn around and go, oh, wow, it doesn't really work. But, you know, we spent the time, let's move on to something else and, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You just spent $5,000 in two days mm -hmm. doing something that didn't work. So it was really gave us a chance to try things that normally we wouldn't have done. So overall, it was a it was a vibe. <laughs> Very nice, relaxed atmosphere by the sound of it. Now we've actually we've been talking off camera, Jeff, about how much the rock scene has changed since you've been away. Um, I'm wondering. I mean, we're always saying on Headbangers Ball that Queensrÿche are the original Seattle band. Make no mistake. But um, do you feel um, any kind of affinity um, with the Seattle scene? In maybe I thought on the lyrical trends and also the whole kind of anti rock star ethic that came out in that music? I think it's a very healthy turn, mm -hmm. really. Um, uh, we've been in the business for quite a few years and we've seen all kinds of trends come and go, fads and you know, musical changes. And um, I, I know when we were first starting out, you know, uh, heavy rock or, or metal, nobody knew what it was, you know. Uh, everybody was into what I guess you would define as new wave music, you know. 
And so we were sort of looked upon as outcasts and, and doing something pretty revolutionary at the time. And uh, now, you know, things have changed again. It seems like every 10 years there's sort of this yeah. swing of things that goes by. Disco's coming back now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, who would have thought? Go figure. <laughs> but I think Queensryche has risen above that. You followed your instincts and um, you, haven't ha you haven't been affected really by what's, what's gone on. Well, we, we like to think of ourselves as musicians, yeah. firstly, uh, rather than the R word, mm. rock star. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think if, if you just keep focus on that, you know, that mm -hmm. this is what you do, you're a musician, you're, you're here to experiment with music and express yourself mm -hmm. that way, then you don't get caught up in that kind of uh, other world, you know. Absolutely. I think that's very important. Okay, well, we're going to talk to the guys some more. We have to take another short break right now, but uh, taking us into that break, you should check out some more Queensryche live in Paris. And, uh,